Murich Yarns for Everyone is brought to you by SWAMS, the Southwest Aboriginal Medical Service, providing high quality, culturally appropriate and holistic health care to build strong and healthy Aboriginal communities. We would like to start by acknowledging, honouring and welcoming the diverse communities of which we are a part of and we celebrate the extraordinary diversity of people's bodies, genders, sexualities and relationship that they represent. Hello and welcome to our second episode of Murich Yarns. My name's Llewellyn. I'm one of the hosts here, um, and we'll go over to you. Hi, my name's Lindley. I'm the Indigenous Outreach Worker with the Syphilis Program. Um, and we're just here to talk about syphilis with you and passing it on to you. Hello, my name is Alan Little, and I'm a men's business Indigenous Outreach Worker. Yep. Hi, I'm Jem. I'm a nurse practitioner and midwife at SWAMS. I'm absolutely passionate about sexual health. Um, really comfortable um, talking and yarning about it um, and um, yeah really happy to be on the, the panel today with you guys so thank you. <laughs> so Jem's our resident expert here at SWAMS whenever I've got a question about sexual health I know I, I'll go to Jem because um, she knows everything it's pretty great so thanks for joining us today. Yeah thanks Llewellyn it's good to That's be right. here with you guys. <laughs> Oh, we're looking at me. All right. Um, so <laughs> like last time when the three of us sat down, we, we had some like really good conversations and a few things came up that we thought um, we might lean on your expertise to talk a little bit about um, sure. and answer any of the questions that even we might have. Um, no worries. So yeah, like we, we were talking about different ways you can get tested for yeah. STIs and not all tests uh, test each one, right? You know, you've got to get a blood test, a urine test, all these things. Um, so did you want to talk to us a little bit about that to start? Yeah, so should we talk about the syphilis testing first? Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. start with syphilis testing. So syphilis testing can be done by a, a conventional blood test, um, but we've got this new test now called the point of care testing, and that's where a drop of blood is taken from the finger and um, it's put onto a testing strip and it literally takes 15 minutes for a um, result, which is fantastic. What that means is that we can test and treat at, at the same time. So um, there's not a long wait to get results. Um, not all places have it, but we're very lucky to have this testing at SWAMS. So we're really trying to encourage people to come and have the test. Yeah, a few, uh, few people have done the training. Um, the well, uh, Alan's one of the ones that's, um, you, you're familiar with the test, Alan? Yes. Yeah. How did you find the training, Alan? Yeah, it was fun. It was, it was interesting too, like just to um, watch everybody. Oh, I because I um we had a choice whether we wanted to get someone to do the test or, um, but I volunteered and done it to myself, and it oh. wasn't it wasn't really that bad. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I complained about it that day, but it wasn't that bad. <laughs> well, I don't know about everybody else, but um, you know, fifteen minutes. Yeah. I think that's. Mm. Um, wonderful for um, Aboriginal people, especially um, waiting around in a waiting area. Mm. Um, I know personally, I wouldn't want to wait a very long time, and then I'll, be, you know, I'll, I would probably be stressing as well, yeah. waiting for my results. Yeah. Um, which are usually the old way would have, would have been uh, what, Jim? Yeah. So with the blood test, it, it takes a day or so to to get the result back. So, you know, you have to go away and then come back with the result. Whereas with the point of care, you can get it that, that in that quick, um, you know, you, sometimes you're in the clinic and you're already doing other things in the clinic. So by the time that 15 minutes is gone, you're ready to get your result. Yeah. That sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah. So what happens if I go in and I get my finger prick? and it comes back positive, what, what happens? Yeah, so normally um, we talk to you ab about that. We might ask you some questions relevant to you know, um, any other testing that you may need. So it's always good to do a full STI check. Often we do have to do a, bl well, we do have to do a blood test um, if it does come up positive. Um, but you know, syphilis is completely treatable, so we know we can treat it with the penicillin. Um, and we just do a blood test and then um, give you the treatment. Yeah, we go through all that with you and explain it at the time. Um, it's really important to And to you mentioned test. treatment. Um, mm. So that's a very big, important part once you've done your testing, if you become positive. Yep, yep. I can answer this one. 
Okay. So treatment is two injections into yep. muscular. I believe we touched on a little bit in the last episode. Yep. And you just go, <laughs> yep. inject. Is that correct, Jane? Yep, so it is two injections and it's into the um, buttocks, outer um, area of the buttocks. Um, and it's um, normally just if we, if we know that there's, it's just a newly um, acquired syphilis, then it's just one injection. If we're not sure how long it's been there for, we might have to give you a few, in, uh, three lots of um, treatment over a three week period. But the best thing is that it's much better to be treated than not treated. So one injection, you mean the two injections at the same time? That's right. And then right. you don't have to come back. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And what, what do you have to do after you get treated? Yeah, so we normally say no sex or no sexual contact for seven days after treatment or use condoms um, every time. Um, you also might have to have that discussion around um, con contact tracing. So, because it's important to keep um, anyone that um, may have um, you may have had sex with, safe as well. Um, so it's around um, asking some of those questions um, and it's really important that your um, partners come in for testing and, and uh, treatment as well. Yeah. You mentioned about contact tracing. Well, I don't know about you, but for black fellas, it's a, mm. that's a big shame thing. Mm. Um, you know, how do we know that no one else is gonna know about it? Yeah, it can be a really hard thing because um, it's a really private, personal thing to talk about, isn't it? You know. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we talk to people around the best ways to to do that. Sometimes uh, they're able to do it themselves, but sometimes they're not able to. So there's different ways that we can let partners know in a confidential way. Um, it's really important. Um, yeah, there's a couple of websites that can be used. Uh, better to know, let them know. Um, we also can do it in an anonymous way um, through the health, the health department. So there's a few different ways and it's just around yarning with the person at the time about what's gonna suit them best. Yep. Yeah. So the best thing is just to be honest and upfront with your partners um, and whoever else may be involved. Yeah, and I guess the thing to know is that um, you know, we know that um, even after treatment and you've had successful treatment, but you can get it back again. So you can get reinfection. So it's not like an immunisation where it will yep. treat you forever. Um, this particular infection you can get back again. Yeah. If you're in contact with someone that has, has syphilis. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, think, do you think people would be comfortable to come in and have that point of care test? I guess when, if you've got that confidentiality in, you'll be, I think you're more comfortable going and seeing a doctor because... Yep, you know, me too. Wouldn't want to be a little yarn carrying it around, don't I? Yep, that's, yep, we don't need that and um, it's not a positive thing to have, but, no. um, you know, doctors are, you know, doctors and nurses, they can't tell anybody else about your personal information when you when you go into that room with them. Mm. Um, so you need to keep that in mind as well as everything's um, private and there won't be any of that yarn mm. carrying happening. Yeah, there's, there's nothing to worry about, Swen. Um, just <laughs> ensure you're getting your test done. Because that's really important, um, making sure that your health is all in check. Yeah, I agree. Because um, I think um, often the sexual health part um, is often not prioritised, mm. you know, and we put it at the bottom of the list. But it's really important that we're looking after our sexual health. Um, it's it's important for our mind, bodies, mental health, our spirit um, to, to have, you know. So we talked sure. about, sorry, Jim, to yeah, cut you off. No, you're right. Um, we talked about everything positive. What about negative? Yeah, yeah. What if you show negative? Yeah. So, oh, I thought you meant like we've talked about all the positive sides of going in no. and get tested. What are the negative <laughs> sides? I was like, oh, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> do we need to talk about that side? So negative sides of testing, testing or yeah. of STIs? Well, so, so you know, um, I guess, I guess my thought was like, 
say you didn't do the point of care test, say you went home mm. after having a blood test done, mm. um, what next? What do you do next if you have to, you know, if we can't get the point of care testing done? How does that work? Yeah, so once you've had a blood test and the result is back, um, if it's negative, well then um, that's all good. Um, we do say there can be a bit of a window period of 12 weeks from time of exposure. So, you know, we'd encourage people to come back and have another test in 12 weeks. Um, but if it comes up positive, then we, we would be getting you back to the clinic, again, all in a confidential way and um, discussing it at, uh, with the person and doing an actual blood test as well um, or an, another blood test because you need another blood test to check the activity of the infection um, and then, then um, having the treatment. Yeah. So, yeah. But if it's negative, you don't have to go back in. Um, no, you just you, you would organise with your doctor or myself, say the nurse practitioner, to get a get your result, um, whether that's on uh, in person, phone. Um, you would organise that at the time, mm -hmm. and if it's all negative, well then um, then you don't uh, need to come back in for any treatment. And then you're done. Yeah, that's it. Game that's over. Not, yeah, not necessarily game over because <laughs> you can get it again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, they didn't have it the first time, so they could get it. That's what we're hoping. But not again. Yeah. 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 So I guess the other thing is with our pregnant ladies, um, you know, uh, we are doing more testing in pregnancy. So um, that's really important that women, as soon as they know they're pregnant, that they're coming in straight away. So we can firstly um, start their antenatal care, but um, do all our normal testing with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Lindley, so when are we? So, when are we recommending that women have uh, testing in pregnancy? Um, first time that you know you're pregnant and you need to go in and get the doctor to get it all checked out to see if you're actually pregnant. Mm. Um, and then it's 26 to 36 and uh, weeks, and then at birth, and then your final test is um, six weeks after um, at your mm. pre-birth, yeah. post-birth. Yeah. Yeah, that's really important, isn't it? Uh, so they won't test you for syphilis unless you ask? Um, so it is covered under the schedule um, now that we do testing at those times, particularly down in the southwest, it's mm -hmm. the, the ones that Lindley said. Um, in the, um, we're in the regions where there might be higher levels of syphilis, they'll also offer one at birth as well. Um, so it will be um, offered, but if it's mm. not, women can also definitely request, yeah, yeah. Um, Although it's not always the woman's, um, you know, responsibility. It comes down to your partners as well. Mm. And um, I mm. think dads have a lot to play in the role as well if, if they are still involved in that uh, relationship or with the pregnancy to also get yourself checked out. So Rick, during the whole process with the women as well, like for the men to be a part of that as well? Absolutely. I reckon that'd be really important, yeah. Come and get your dad checks. Come and well, get your dad checks. Yeah, because yeah. we often forget about the dads, don't we? And it's important that they're keeping up with their checks as well. Yeah. Yeah, and the yeah. sooner you get tested, the sooner you'll know if you have syphilis or not, or another STI. Um, mm. But syphilis is not, you can't, there's no warning signs or, you know, it's a great pretender, as everybody knows out there. That's right. That's the phrase I was looking for before. That's it. Well, I, yeah. I, thought, I thought I wrote it down, it's but I didn't. It's mine now. That's okay. You can have it. <laughs> um, and then, Jem, is it true that the, the risk of it passing on to the baby is higher earlier in pregnancy as well? Um, it's, it does depend sometimes on the stage that the woman's in, in um, uh, you know, whether she's got, there's different stages of syphilis, so, you know, primary and secondary stage is quite infectious. Um, the baby can be affected any time during the pregnancy um, and um, it, they can be treated, also the woman can be treated any time during pregnancy. So that's really good to know that the earlier the treatment, the better the outcome for mum and baby. Yep. Yeah. And it's true that if antibiotics that are given, not the injection, um, so it is the uh, penicillin injection still the same as well, same as the yep. the other one, yeah. And and that uh, seems to work um, really well. Um, it's been the treatment that's been used for a long time, and it still works against syphilis, which is really great. Yeah. Good. Um, so Lindley, what are the um, what are the effects of uh, uh, congenital syphilis? What sort of things can? Oh yeah. 
miscarriages, mm. um, premature birth of the baby, um, even death sometimes, mm. um, which would be a pretty wara or um, bad thing to happen. Mm. Mm. Um, also, the baby doesn't grow as it should have. Um, some things aren't looking the way that a normal healthy baby should. Mm. Um, and it just gets worse and worse. Mm. Um, and your best chance of having a really healthy baby is to going in, getting them checked done, um, so then you can have your mind at ease, that you have this beautiful um, healthy baby growing inside of you, and that also your body is as healthy as you can be um, while you're growing something, a little miracle. Mm, mm. Yeah, I think so. And I think the main message is it's it's completely preventable, isn't That's it? That's right. With yep. testing. Yeah. Yep. If you test, you can prevent it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you can get the right help that's needed straight away. Mm. Um, and don't be shame or shy about going in and talking to somebody like yourself. Mm. Um, <laughs> and I know that, um, you know, you're such a good person to talk to as well in the oh, drop-in clinic. Thank you. Um, <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> and the, um, you're out and about in the community. Um, and if any young ladies or older women have any concerns, that they can actually reach out to you um, and give SWAMS a call. Yeah, yeah. And is the, the medication, antibiotics and that, are they always on hand at clinics? Yeah. Oh, definitely. We're so, you know, um, most clinics will have the antibiotics to, to treat it, yeah. Have we had any cases of syphilis in the babies down in the southwest? Um, to this point, we haven't had any congenital syphilis cases in the southwest. There has yep. been in other parts of WA. Um, so, yeah, I guess we want to keep our mob healthy and, and um, just encourage testing so, you know, we prevent that. Yeah. Yep. And, but in saying that too, the test rates down here are a bit low at the moment, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And um, I think, um, like I said, often it's not prioritised. So, you know, it's always the thing that's the last thing on the list to do. Yeah. And we do, you know, everyone's busy with family and um, other things going on. And yeah. um, so it's been, um, the testing rates have been a bit lower, but it's why we really want to encourage people to come in and, and just have a test. It's a really easy test to do. Um, urine swabs, blood test, and then you've got had a full check and we'd encourage people just to come in. Better to know than not to know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Back to me, I guess. Um, we were talking a little bit before about gonorrhea and chlamydia, so we'll, we'll move away from the syphilis for a minute and talk about some interesting stuff there. Learning lots, I like it. Um, now with chlamydia and gonorrhea, I think I think on the last episode we talked a little bit about what what might happen if you don't treat syphilis. Mm, we didn't actually yep. get to talk about what happens if you don't treat chlamydia or gonorrhea. Yep. So I thought I thought maybe we could have a bit of a conversation around that. Mm. Um, did you want to Did you want to kick that one off, Lindley? Oh, I was just about to have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll it handball it. Oh, oh go on. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you want to talk about first then? Yep. Well, <coughs> gonorrhea. Gonorrhea. If you can spell it, we can talk about it. <laughs> I already spelled it wrong, so <laughs> I think you got the wrong way to talk about it. <laughs> no. um, so it was, nice bacteria infection. Gonorrhea is an STI caused by a bacteria transmitted during unprotected sexual activity with an infected person. Yep. Uh, and then gonorrhea as well doesn't always have symptoms. Mm. And however, seems like a lot of STIs don't always have symptoms, isn't that right? It's yes. Yeah, that way. you just worry. can't tell, can mm. you? Really? Yep. So one of the symptoms would be to look for is pain or discomfort. Um, in pain or discomfort. Areas. Oh, I was going to yep. say where? In your bits. You know, just comes mm. like sore legs or no. sore arms. No, not that. All right. And the unusual discharge from yep. the penis or the vagina. Yep. 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 That's right. Looks like it can. Uh... <laughs> what are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it looks like you can also have unusual discharge. Penis and vagina. Come on, we've got to get comfortable with saying these words, everybody. It's the way Penis, you said it. Vagina. Like, so... <laughs> Where was comfortable? Yeah. Then you were like <laughs> putting that. Trying to be Penis. serious here. 
Why is it that talking about those bits is always uncomfortable? <laughs> all right, everyone has one, so yeah. we all got that out of the way. <laughs> no, it's what um, uh. Gem always says, you know, our sexual health is important as just as any other body part. Um, so we need to make sure we're talking about it more. Yeah. Sometimes it's going to be a laughing time because it's just something we're not comfortable with talking about it yet. Yeah. Um, so if we can make it more of a general conversation, include everybody else, I think we're on the right track. Yeah, I agree. And I think, you know, the more knowledge people have about their own bodies, yeah. then the more likely they are, they are to be able to make decisions and choices about their own bodies, you yeah. know. And we're all different and we all have different decisions that um, we want to make. But um, if you know the information, then you've got those choices, haven't you? And um, you make yeah. those decisions about what happens and with your body. And gonorrhea is one of the top STIs that is most common in yeah, all certainly walks of life. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, and it's certainly been increasing as well. Um, gonorrhea. So we know chlamydia was our probably is our most common STI yep. um, in our younger age group, uh, the um, 16 to 24, and then the 24 to 29 age group. But you know, chlamydia uh, gonorrhea is increasing as well. So we're yeah. talking about the so symptoms. Sorry. I was just going to say they're all increasing. Yeah. What's going on there? Mm. It's just. <laughs> well, people are enjoying <laughs> breaking themselves. Breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> people have been <laughs> locked out for too enjoying, long. Yeah. Yeah. Locked yeah. Down, enjoying yeah. themselves. COVID 19. <laughs> lockdown, no one's going out, no one's seeing each other, but they're still sharing stuff. They are. <laughs> yeah. Well, how do you so, think it travels? Well, when, and this is the question, isn't it? Traveling. Now, someone told me you could get it off the bus seat. Or off the toilet seat. And I thought... <laughs> oh, hey, who have you been speaking to? Oh, <laughs> lots of people. Lots of very interesting people. You know. I, just, you know. But it's, wow. something, it's something you hear. Something you see. You know. On the internet. Comments. People saying. Oh, you know. I got it off the toilet seat. I, I, I just grabbed it. How is the toilet seat the and a bus button. seat the same when you're half you're naked putting, on a toilet seat? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you're sitting on the bus. But sometimes, you know. I've got to get comfortable. <laughs> Are you catching the bus, Maggie? <laughs> <laughs> you lost it now, you've lost it. Well, I'm glad because it's been a while since I've had oh, to get a bus. So there you go, you're not using a bus. Just, you know. Oh. That, that cleared my block. No. <laughs> I can breathe that. Have you popped your ears? <laughs> it popped. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like this seat. is this is an interesting thing. You know, you hear you hear lots in the media, you see lots in the news. There's, there's a lot of concerns about all these different diseases that we can catch in all these bizarre yeah. ways. Yeah. But you know, can can you? I guess. <laughs> I'm just gonna handle that. <laughs> what do you reckon, Alan? Uh, I hope not. I I hope, no, I hope not. I really hope I don't, not. No, I don't think you get it from toilet seat. It's no. usually by skin to skin contact. Yeah. Yep. It doesn't live outside the body for, for very long, so it's not going to live on a toilet seat or, or a bus seat. <laughs> or a bus seat. There you go. Let's just hope for it's long. COVID 19, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, no, yeah. It's, it's, it's more around your um, you know, sexual activity and contact. Um, so. You can keep getting the bus. Keep catching the bus. <laughs> and sitting you on don't the toilet have seat. to wipe it down. The bus driver does that for us. COVID. Yeah. Sitting on the toilet seats. Maybe put some paper down just to be safe. You know. Is that what you do? No. <laughs> yeah, not because I'm worried about chlamydia, though. I just don't want, you know. Wait, gonorrhea we're talking about. Oh, no, not because I'm worried about gonorrhea or chlamydia on the toilet seat. I just don't trust other people. <laughs> It's, says, just, it's just good hygiene Says the practice. 99% of the world right now. There you go. If everyone's doing it, then we're yeah. all good. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> well, I mean, if everyone's covering the toilet seat, not if everyone's doing it. So, Llewellyn, have you heard any other little um, things uh, out there? Well, you know, um, there is some funny things going around, some funny, like, uh, anecdotes. And, and, oh, okay. And, um, you know, like, we were talking in the last episode about how, like, if you've got a shank, it might go away. Oh. Mm. So, mm. you know, like, if, if, you know, you've had sexual contact with someone and you just have a shower afterwards, does that, can you just, like, wash it off? Well, with soap? no. 
Soap and water's not Well, gonna, you should use soap every time not you're gonna showering. Do it. I hope so. If you are out there, I hope you use soap. <laughs> uh, but specifically to wash away the bacteria is, yeah. what, is what I think a lot of people yeah. might be talking about. Well, it's a serious question because some people would probably think it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, we know that having a shower afterwards is not going to get rid of the bacteria. So, yeah. Um, the only thing that gets rid of the TIs is antibiotics. Yep, so. So you got no hope? Showering is not going to. Sorry. You've got plenty of hope. You've just got to go in and get yeah, it. No You've got to go. Like, you've if got someone... no hope thinking that water's going to wash, wash it, it away. away. No, yeah. water won't wash yeah. it away. I think that, that, that ties in nicely with the contact tracing is you might get a message from someone else yes. who's been notified and then yeah. that's when you need to go in. You mm. can't just have a shower or um, what's the other one? Have some urol, you know, just rinse it out. Have a urol. Have a urol. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like a little packet. <laughs> you to have solve all my problems. <laughs> antibiotics. And because, you know, you might look down and go, well, they've had it, but I'm clean. I don't have any symptoms. Mm. And we know a lot of people don't have symptoms, so you know you can't really tell. So when when should we be going having a, a sexual health check? Well, I haven't been in a long time. <laughs> what? Why are you telling the public that? <laughs> Do we need to know that, Llewellyn? I don't know. I'm just, I just, you know, you said when. I'm just saying, like, you know, you, I, could, <laughs> you could be the spreader. Uh, <laughs> The double syllables, See? there it is. Uh, two L's in Llewellyn. Is there two L's in syphilis? <laughs> no, I don't there may be. No, I think it's one, it's one L, isn't it? Is it one L? I can never spell that either. It's like, <laughs> it's coming at me now. I'm just saying. Yeah, you just put it out there. It's all good, bro. Just put it yeah. out there. Yeah. But I think it's... Uh, but even if you've got a regular partner, should you have a check? Yes. Yeah. 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 Don't maybe shout out like Llewellyn does. You yeah. Know, tell everybody. Yeah. Just keep that Don't private. Need to let the world like, know. I feel like my character's being questioned here. Oh, no, no. We just got... <laughs> no, no. no, I think it's with Llewellyn that you're feeling comfortable talking yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um, that's how we want everyone to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, how often? Oh, yeah, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about how often we should get who checked. Who should get checked and, and who? And how well, often? So everyone who's yeah. sexually active should get checked. Mm. Yep. And is it after every new sexual partner? Uh, yes, that's a yep. good idea. Yeah. Yep. Or at least unprotected yes. sexual partner. Definitely. Yeah. But I mean, we always encourage if you've got a new partner to yep. have a check up. Get a check. Yeah. Yep. And. Um, and even if you've got a you know regular partner, it's good to have a check as yep. part of your health check. You have those every twelve months, and you know just ask for a, a, ch a full check. Mm. And if you're not unsure of your sexual health status as well, you're not sure mm -hmm. when, just come in anyways and have a yarn, and we can mm. work out if you're due for one, if you need one. Um, yeah, having that confidential conversation again. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And especially, um, you know, for our young people, we like them to have a check every sort of six months to, to yep. 12, 12 months. Um, it's a really good idea. If anything changes in your relationship, because mm. relationships change and things, circumstances can change. So, And you said young people. What do you mean, like, what age? Yeah, well, we're looking at our sort of 16 to 29 yep. year, but we also know that there's been a bit of a different change with syphilis in mm. that we're seeing that in the older population as well. So, you know, um, so we do encourage um, people up to 45 to be coming and having a check for that because we are seeing cases in uh, older people. Yep. Yeah. How many letters are there in, in gonorrhea? No, we're not too Oh, no, that. that's too hard. <laughs> Can't do that. G O N. He's getting it. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. I've run out of fingers. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I hope you got ten. No. I got okay. eight actually, and two thumbs. Great job. Okay, what were we up to? Um, I think we spoke enough about the gonorrhea. What about chlamydia? I don't chlamydia? think we even touched. Ah, uh, no, no, there was a bit. Did we, did we touch the did we touch the symptoms? No, we didn't. Yeah, say... yeah, we did. We talked about discharge. Yeah. And we talked about looking at something different. We talked about how you can have no symptoms. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. So well, yeah. So this is true, right? 
I'm stay am I stating or questioning? I haven't decided yet. Um <laughs> What? Wait, we, start we were again. saying <laughs> start again. <laughs> what was that about? Are you stating or questioning? I'll get there. I'll You're get there. confusing Just, us. Yeah. The, okay. Yeah. We were talking about where you can see it, whether it's on your 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 penis or your vagina or even on the anus. Yeah. Um any any thoughts on where else you might see it? So or what feel is, it. are you talking about? Gonorrhea cigarettes? still. We're talking about gonorrhea still. Gonorrhea? Yeah. Well a you, sore throat. Yeah, you can get gonorrhea in your throat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's through, you know, oral sex. Um and you know, <coughs> I guess when people come in we ask them the questions we ask them are relevant to what type of tests we need we need yep. to do. Yeah. So, um, but gonorrhea is often got no symptoms, but in men, they can are slightly, you know, more likely to get symptoms. So, um, but not all the time. Yeah. So and men are more likely to get symptoms. Is that yeah, what men can oh, get men can get the discharge. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> and how do we get tested for that again? Yeah, so that's really easy. It's just a pee in a cup, just a urine test. Oh, that sounds yeah, easy. Yeah, so easy. Yeah. Mm. Um, so for guys, you just pee in a cup. Mm. This is more out of my own interest than necessarily need to know, but will that detect it if you have it in your throat? Uh, no, if you have it in your throat, you need to have a swab of your throat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do they do that, that pick it up. Do they do that very often though? Uh, well, again, it depends on, um, you know, what sort of sexual activity um, and oh, okay. the, that... Uh, discussion you have with the client at the time as to what tests are needed so you know it's it's no good uh doing a test if it's not going to pick up something because you're twisting the wrong place mm. yeah so you know again that can be a bit uh daunting for people to yep. talk about because it's such a private thing yeah but it's, it's super important because <coughs> you don't want to miss something and then you know you're, you're testing the wrong the wrong place yeah mm. yeah and mm. it's always best to use condoms yeah, so that's going to be, you know, what helps protect against, uh, yeah, all of these STIs. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Or like we saw in the last episode, the dental dam. The dental dam, yep. yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're a bit harder to um, access. Not all places have them, but you can get them online and, you know, through certain sexual health clinics and, um, you know, you just have to look around where you can get them from. But they're that barrier, that barrier method, so... Yeah. And don't stretch them. No. Don't stretch them. I learned that one. Last last episode, not <laughs> not anywhere else. <laughs> but they can no, tear. I've been and told. You, and you can't use them like you can't flip it over. You actually have to. Yep. <laughs> get rid of Give it. Give it a rinse. Yeah. yeah. You can't wash it and then use it. <laughs> no. And that's the same for condoms. Yeah, yeah, we wouldn't recommend using it. You know. Um, Twice. Well, yeah, and flipping it over because then that'll really. <laughs> <laughs> spread the bacteria, spread the bacteria. If, yeah. if there's an STI present. Yeah, that's yep. right. Yep, yep. So, not like your knickers, Llewellyn. <laughs> no, you can't wear it four times. <laughs> oh. uh, I hope we didn't cut that out of last week. <laughs> or last time, rather. I think we did, eh? <laughs> Did we? I don't know. I don't know. I think we kept that bit in, uh, didn't we? Um, <laughs> we'll find out when people people writing in, the watchers writing in, go, yep. why are they talking about undies for? What's that about? We'll have to, re <laughs> we'll have to release the footage. <laughs> and uh, all our STI tests are free at SWAMS if you're, you're a member and mm. have done your 715. Yeah, so all um, those, the you know, common STI tests are all covered. Um, yeah, and they're they're not charged for um, and yeah they basically are a, a blood test a urine swabs so we can do swabs as well um, or uh, like we said before the point of care test so there's no charge yep. for any of that testing yeah there's um doing the 715 um, is that a, when you're getting your s sexual health check like do you have to ask for that separately yeah, well, I think um, sometimes um, the health provider will offer it, but if they don't, then, yeah, just bring it up and ask one because it is a really good idea to have it checked, um, you know, every year. Um, yeah, especially if you've had any change with the relationship or a uh, changing me. partner or circumstances. So 
So sometimes you might have to ask, ask for it. Um, but just remember that at SWAMS, um, you know, we're used to um, having these conversations and um, it's just it's really important to be on top of your, your sexual health. Mm. All right, I think that's as good a time as any to wrap it up. What do you guys think? I think it's a good time to wrap it up. I had fun having a yarn with your mob and talking about the topics that we spoke about today. Yeah, it was good to have Gem in today and um, thank you for coming in and sharing your knowledge and um, the awesome things that you're doing in the clinic. Yeah, thanks. Um, it's been great to be here and um, it feels good to have these conversations and be uh, getting this information out there. Yeah. And thank you to you, the audience, for joining us. Um, hopefully we'll see you on our third podcast again. So um, thank you very much for joining us and we'll talk to you soon. On YouTube. <laughs> yep, sure will. <laughs> we would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of Noongar Buja, where we record, edit and distribute this podcast and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. We pay respects to their elders past, present and emerging.